drugs. And this is something that Alex Jones has a special report we're going to play later in the show targets this exactly. This is exactly what happened with Philip Seymour Hoffman. He is a victim of the war of drugs. So many people in this country are. Prohibition has added a new level of suffering. We've got the most number of people that have ever been in prison because of prohibition. It has not done anything to solve the drug problem. And what it has done is given us problems of violence on the streets that they then blame on innocent law abiding citizens who are not shooting people on the street. It's the drug gangs that are doing that. But we're going to be right back. We're going to play what our mayor and the city council here in Austin has said. Because it isn't just the mayor of Poughkeepsie that has seen where these mayors are going and trying to ban all guns. We've seen this here in Austin. We catch them. Every once in a while, we catch them making a confession. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Mike Martinez. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives Gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press. All the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine of your sick, tired, and obese when you visit InfoWarsHealth.com. Be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula 
population using six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center in the heart of the resistance. You're listening to the Alex Jones Show. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex on this Sunday, February the 9th, 2014. Now we have a key article on Infowars.com. Mayor says nationwide gun confiscation is the goal of mayors against illegal guns. Now this is an article by Kit Daniels that he posted first on Friday. It's so important we wanted to bring that back up here for you. We wanted to go down, show you these videos, play for you on the radio what these people are saying. We've got a city councilman here in Austin. Mike Martinez and Jakari Jackson and I were there filming this event. This is Man Moms Demand Action here in Austin. And he got provoked by some people who were just holding two signs, pro-Second Amendment signs. They were not yelling. They were not screaming. Art Acevedo, the police chief here, misrepresented that, said that they were screaming at them. They weren't. It was the people around them who were doing it, and we've got that on videotape. My wife was there standing behind the two guys taking videotape, so we know what happened. We saw it there. But at one point, Mike Martinez gets up when he gets ready to speak and takes the mic and says, your sign, which this is a sign saying that they're going to come after all guns, they're going to ban all guns. He said, your sign is not true yet, but hang on to it because we're going to make that come true. Here's that video. First of all, to the gentleman that's dying for attention, uh, someone needs to inform him that there is no gun ban currently. But because of the work that we're doing here today, we will make your sign legitimate shortly, so you hang on to that. Yeah, they will make that sign legitimate shortly. That is the memo that all of these Democrat local government people have. Now, Art Acevedo had gone to Washington. He's been a part of this gun control meetings that Obama is, is running, as well as Mike Martinez. They're all on this agenda. And we've got one mayor in Poughkeepsie, New York, who pulled out and said that he wasn't going to be a part of an organization that was about gun confiscation, that it was misrepresented to him and to a lot of other people. 50 mayors have pulled out. They said that what they learned was that it was about all out nationwide gun confiscation, and that wasn't going to help the crime problem. They wanted to pull back illegal guns. In other words, guns that were in the, arm, in the hands of felons, for example. But this is about total gun confiscation. This is what they've been working for and moving for for a long time. Here's some context from a year ago. Here's an InfoWars report from one year ago. Aaron Dykes here for InfoWars.com and a quick news bulletin. Now, it came out today in Politicker how after Aurora, Mayor Bloomberg made his plans for the next massacre and how he was going to use it to push gun control. Well, no duh, we saw this coming, but it's good to have it documented now. And it details how in just a few hours after the Aurora massacre, he began flagging Obama, who was then a candidate for re-election, Romney saying, what are you going to do about guns? reviving his whole mayors against illegal guns, which itself is a fraudulent group, misdirecting on the real issue of gun violence, which really comes from gun control policies within cities, and making it seem like an individual problem, a big, a big misdirection government always does, despite the issue. But I already documented back on January 1st, New Year's of this year, the top 10 events that proved the Obama administration was already planning gun control long before the Newtown tragedy, and just simply exploited it with all the dead children and used it to move forward the agenda they've been stealthily planning for years and years and years. Feinstein herself was admittedly working on her assault weapons ban legislation on the days leading up to the election and it had nothing to do specifically with Adam Lanza or how he got his weapons or what allegedly happened there. It had to do with them waiting for any kind of tragedy to happen and just using the propaganda on the backs of it, making people feel guilty for the those deaths and trying to take away everyone's rights. 
That's right. As Aaron pointed out, back in November of 2012, this is in between the Aurora, Colorado shooting and the Sandy Hook shooting, Dianne Feinstein was holding staff meetings with the ATF. And her rumored bill was going to ban pistol grips, high capacity magazines. We're seeing that now in a lot of these gun control states. And it was going to ban other aspects of weapons and possession. You couldn't resell your weapons to other people if you had that in your possession. But she goes all the way back to 1995. Remember this quote? If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. Yeah, that's exactly what she wanted to do. She wanted an outright ban. She wanted it in 95, almost 20 years ago. Now, the Detroit police chief has had an interesting epiphany. He's had a journey going first from California, then to Maine, and then to Michigan and to Detroit. And this is covered in the article from Kit Daniels. He links to this article. This is a police chief who, when he was in California, he completely bought into the idea that confiscating guns was going to make people safer. And then when he went to Maine, where there was very, very low crime, but very, very high gun ownership, it began to change his mind. And it wasn't just political pressure from the people there, pressuring him to grant concealed carry licenses, as he was saying. He was very reluctant to do that initially. But it was something that I think really took with him. I think he really learned the lesson and took it to heart because when he moved back to a gun control area in Detroit, Michigan, he's now making statements like this. He says, if more citizens are armed, criminals would think twice about attacking them. This is Detroit Police Chief James Craig. And he said, when we look at a good community members who have concealed carry permits, the likelihood that they'll shoot is based on their lack of confidence in the police department. So he says he changed his orientation very quickly when he went to Maine. And, of course, they feel like they always have to put a balancing argument against this in the press. So they have somebody from a gun control group. And she says, well, this is uh, Robin Thomas. She's with a uh, gun violence group in San Francisco. She says his position is an emotional one. It's based on the idea that people feel safer when they have guns. That's not what the police chief is saying. The police chief has guns. He already has a gun. He doesn't feel safer because these Honest citizens, these law-abiding citizens have guns. It's not just that, that they have guns. This is because he's seen the decline in violence. He knows that they're going to be there. They're going to have his back in many of these situations. In many of these situations, it will be diffused peacefully just by people having guns. They can prevent it from ever even happening. It's a deterrent. He knows that. It's reflected in the FBI statistics. Contra to what this lady says in the article, this Robin Thomas says there's no research that shows that guns make anyone safer or that it reduces crime. That is an absolute lie. There's been research after research showing that. As a matter of fact, we can see what happens in areas like the UK where they completely ban guns. We see that gun violence, not just overall violence, but violence from guns doubled after the guns were confiscated in England. So how does that happen? Well, it happens because you've got this thing called a black market, just like with drugs. Just merely prohibiting something doesn't make it go away. It still stays there because people have a need for it. It'll be there. It'll just be there as a black market. And what you will wind up doing is adding a very dangerous criminal element to it. You'll give criminal groups a monopoly on the provision of this thing, just like it was during alcohol prohibition. Just like we've seen with alcohol prohibition, the same thing can and does happen whenever they prohibit guns. That's why gun violence doubled in England after they prohibited all guns. Now, why is it that they're only these mayors are only concerned about violence from guns? They're not concerned about violence from people that are getting killed with shovels or with knives or with anything else. It's only guns. Because they want to take your guns. They want to take your right to defend yourself. They want to make you completely dependent upon the government. And they want to have you at the mercy of the government. And we've seen all too often what happens when a government loses all constraint. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend. You will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying 